Good evening. This is Akashvani. I am Valsa Williams with the news at 9. The headlines Prime Minister Narendra Modi says he is anguished over the incidents of violence against women in Manipur assures guilty will not be spared Both houses of parliament adjourned for the day following ruckus over the issue of Manipur violence Supreme Court refers Delhi government's plea challenging validity of central ordinance regarding control over services to five judge constitutional bench Sri Lanka President Ranil Wickremesinghe arrives in New Delhi on a two-day visit. BSE Sensex gains 474 points to close at a new record peak of 67,572. NSE closes at 19,979. In FIFA Women's Football World Cup, New Zealand beat Norway in opening match, Australia defeat Ireland in another match. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today said his heart is filled with pain and anger over an incident of violence against women in Manipur. He assured stringent punishment for the guilty with full might of law. He was addressing the media at Parliament House complex ahead of the monsoon session of Parliament today. Mr Modi said the Manipur incident is shameful for any civilized society. आज जब मैं आपके बीच आया हूं इस लोकतंत्र के मंदिर के पास खड़ा हूं तब मेरा हृदय पीड़ा से भरा हुआ है क्रोध से भरा हुआ है मणिपुर की जो घटना सामने आई है किसी भी सभ्य समाज के लिए ये शर्मसार करने वाली घटना है पाप करने वाले गुनाह करने वाले कितने हैं कौन है वो अपनी जगह पे है लेकिन बेइज्जती पूरे देश की हो रही है एक करोड़ देशवासियों को शर्मसार होना पड़ रहा है The Prime Minister's response came after a video of the incident appeared on the social media. The National Commission for Women has condemned the Manipur incident in a tweet. The commission said it has taken seriously cognizance of the matter and asked the Director General of Police Manipur to promptly take appropriate action. The commission also directed Twitter India to remove the video from its platform. It said the video compromises the victims' identities and is a punishable offence. Condemning the incident, the governor of Manipur, Narusuya Uike, said that such a shameful incident is a matter of stigma for civilized society. The governor directed the police department to take up immediate steps to bring the perpetrators of the heinous crime to book and award exemplary punishment as per law. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh also assured of punishment for the perpetrators of this incident. पुलिस लोगों को बोला कि जो भी है वीडियो का ऑथेंटिकेट करो रियलिटी और है उसके बाद में तुम जहां जहां में सस्पेंशन एरिया है उसमें ऑपरेशन करके उसको पकड़ना है और से गवर्नमेंट इतना भी ट्राई करेंगे कि एफर्ट देंगे कि जो भी इविडेंस वगैरह करके वो जैसे वाला कल्प्रिट क्राइम जो कर रहा है सजा Meanwhile Manipur police have arrested one of the key accused seen in a 4th of May video in which two tribal women were being paraded naked by a mob at a village in Senapati district. The BJP today accused the Congress and other opposition parties of running away from debate in parliament on the Manipur violence issue. Briefing media in New Delhi senior party leader Ravi Shankar Prasad said it is a serious matter and the government wanted a debate on this in both houses of parliament. कांग्रेस पार्टी और विपक्ष किस क्लॉज में चर्चा हो इसी पर बहस कर रहे हैं तो आपके लिए वहां की घटना इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है बहस का क्लॉज इंपॉर्टेंट है एक सर्वानुमति जाती तो उससे वहां की संवेदनशीलता को सामान्य करने में और मदद मिलती कि पूरी संसद एक स्वर में बोल रही है जब प्रधानमंत्री जी ने सुबह सुबह उस मामले को इतना सख्ती से अपनी आवाज दी तो उस पर तो एक देश में एक साझेदारी का संकेत जाना चाहिए था ना कि पूरी संसद एक है पूरा देश एक है Mr Prasad also questioned the silence of Congress leaders on the incidents of violence against women in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. Both houses of parliament were adjourned for the day today following a ruckus over the issue of Manipur violence in the Lok Sabha when the house met after the first adjournment at 2 p.m. the presiding officer disallowed the adjournment notices moved by members of different political parties on various issues including the violence in Manipur. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Prahlad Joshi said the government has already clarified that it is ready for discussion on Manipur violence. हम दोनों सदनों में चर्चा करने के लिए तैयार है मणिपुर से एक संवेदनाशील विषय है एक मानव संबंध 
एक बहुत बड़ा संवेदना का विषय है इसलिए हम चर्चा करना चाहते हैं और चर्चा के उत्तर भी डिटेल में गृहमंत्री जी देगा इसलिए मैं निवेदन करता हूं कृपया सुचारू रूप से सदन चलाने के लिए सहयोग करें During the proceedings the members from the Congress DMK JDU and others trooped into the well of the house raising slogans later the house was adjourned for the day in the Rajya Sabha when the house met after the second adjournment at 2 pm information and broadcasting minister Anurag Singh Thakur introduced the cinematograph amendment bill 2023 Afterwards the leader of the opposition in the Rajya Sabha Malikarjun Kharge raised the issue of violence in Manipur demanding discussion under rule 267 later the house was adjourned for the day today was the first day of the monsoon session of parliament which will continue till the 11th of next month Rajya Sabha chairman Jagdeep Dhankar has nominated four women parliamentarians to the panel of vice chairpersons they are PT Usha S Pangnon Konyak Dr. Fozia Khan and Sulata Deo. The panel reconstituted before the monsoon session contains a total of 8 names: V. Vijay Sai Reddy, Ghansham Tiwari, Dr. L. Hanumanthaya and Chukendu Shekhar Rai have also been nominated to the panel of vice chairpersons. The government today said there is no proposal to introduce a competitive examination for the selection of high court judges. In a written reply to the Rajya Sabha, Law Minister Arjun Ram Meghwal said the high court judges are being appointed as per the constitutional provisions. Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has said that provisions of the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal POSH Act 2013 are applicable to all national sports federations NSFs as applicable to any entity defined in the act. In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha today Mr Thakur said the NSFs are bound to take action in terms of the extent legal provisions in the cases of sexual harassment reported to them he said the ministry has also issued instructions to all nsfs from time to time on the prevention of sexual harassment in sports the death toll in a landslide that occurred at kalapur tehsil in raigarh district of maharashtra last night has risen to 16 21 others are reported to be injured in the incident four teams of the national disaster response force were deployed in the rescue operation the rescue operation was called off in the evening due to heavy rainfall and the threat of further landslides it will resume tomorrow morning 98 people have been rescued from the landslide site till now The center has prohibited the export of non-basmati white rice to ensure adequate domestic availability at reasonable prices. The domestic prices of rice are on an increasing trend and the retail prices have increased by over 11% over a year. The Consumer Affairs Ministry said the prohibition on the export of non-basmati white rice will lead to a lowering of prices for consumers in the country. However, there is no change in the export policy of non-basmati rice which forms the bulk of rice exports. The ministry said this will ensure that the farmers continue to get the benefit of remunerative prices in the international market. This is Akashwani giving you the news for quick news updates around the clock. Follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. The Supreme Court has referred the Delhi government's plea challenging the constitutional validity of the GNCT Amendment Ordinance 2023 issued by the Centre to the five-judge Constitution Bench. The ordinance relates to control over bureaucrats. The three-judge bench of Chief Justice D. Y. Chandrachud and Justices P. S. Narasimha and Manoj Mishra was hearing the plea against the Delhi Services Ordinance, giving overriding power to the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi to oversee the transfers and postings of civil servants in the national capital. In Punjab, the Gurdaspur District Administration has suspended the visit of pilgrims to Gurdwara Shri Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan via Shri Kartarpur Sahib corridor for the next three days. The step has been taken due to the rising water level of the Ravi River that has inundated the zero line at Dera Baba Nanak in Gurdaspur district. Under India's G20 presidency on the second day of the fourth and final meeting of the employment working group today in Indore, Madhya Pradesh, delegates brainstormed to finalize the draft resolution on three important issues: sustainable funding for social security, gig and platform economy, and social security and global skills. 
The final manifesto on all three issues will be decided in the meeting of Employment and Labour Ministers tomorrow. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe arrived in New Delhi this evening on a two-day visit to India at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Minister of State for External Affairs V. Murli Dharan received him at the airport. This is his first visit since assuming the office of President. The visit takes place as both countries celebrate the 75th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations this year. During the visit, President Vikramasinghe is scheduled to meet President Draupadi Murmu and hold bilateral talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on a range of issues of mutual interest. India today signed a memorandum of cooperation with Japan to develop a resilient semiconductor supply chain. Addressing a press conference in New Delhi Electronics and IT Minister Ashwini Vaishnav said there will be cooperation on manufacturing, equipment, research, design, talent development and supply. Mr. Vaishnav said the MOU with Japan signifies the confidence of the world in India's capabilities and commitment to building a comprehensive semiconductor ecosystem in India. India Semiconductor Mission is progressing at a very fast pace, step by step we are achieving new milestones. Today a very important milestone has been achieved. Japan and India today signed a memorandum of cooperation for semiconductor development, manufacturing, research, design and talent development. The world is looking at India as a major destination in their entire semiconductor journey. Key domestic benchmark indices scales new highs today amid mixed global queues. Extending its gaining streak of the previous session, the BSE Sensex closed at a new record peak. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange galloped to settle close to the 20,000 mark for the first time. A report from the business desk. The Sensex gained 474 points to finish at 67,572. Similarly, the Nifty 50 also gained 146 points to end at 19,979. In the forex market, the rupee appreciated 10 paise to close at 81 rupees and 99 paise against the US dollar. And in intraday trade, Brent crude was trading at $79.85 per barrel. Rajesh Lake for Akashwani News. The Indian Meteorological Department has said exceptionally heavy rainfall occurred at isolated places over Konkan and South Gujarat state today. In its forecast, it said extremely heavy rainfall activity is likely to continue over Madhya Maharashtra and Gujarat during the next two days and isolated heavy to very heavy rainfall thereafter. It also predicted heavy to very heavy rainfall is very likely over Odisha for the next three days and over Chhattisgarh, Vidarbha, Telangana and interior Karnataka during the next two days. The biggest FIFA Women's Football World Cup kicked off in New Zealand and Australia today. In the opening match, New Zealand defeated Norway 1-0 in Auckland's Eden Park. Hannah Wilkinson's lone strike helped New Zealand back their first ever World Cup win. In another match of the day, Australia began its tournament journey with 1-0 win over the Republic of Ireland in Sydney. For Australia, defender Steph Catley converted a penalty kick, putting on board her team's lone goal enough for the victory. In cricket, the second and final cricket test between India and West Indies is underway at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain, Trinidad. West Indies won the toss and opted to bowl first. India were 101 for no loss when reports last came in. For India, Pesha Mukesh Kumar made his debut while for West Indies bowling all-rounder Kirk McKenzie made his debut. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi says he is anguished over the incidents of violence against women in Manipur and shows guilty will not be spared. Both Houses of Parliament adjourned for the day following ruckus over the issue of Manipur violence. Supreme Court refers Delhi government's plea challenging validity of central ordinance regarding control over services to five-judge constitutional bench. Sri Lanka President Ranil Vikramasinghe arrives in New Delhi on a two-day visit. BSE Sensex gains 474 points to close at a new record peak of 67,572. NSE closes at 19,979. In FIFA Women's Football World Cup, New Zealand beat Norway in opening match. Australia defeat Ireland in another match. That is all in the news at 9. Good night. <laughs>